there's a couple of reasons I want to point out why we're doing these things in play, because play is at the very beginning of our success path. It is because most of these things, you know, you're not doing a lot of thinking. Sure, you're you're mixing and you're thinking what colors do I want to start with, but it's not like you're having to think too hard, at least I hope. And uh, what that does is you can see now that you can actually learn a lot from play and play has a low bar of entry. All you have to do is get out some paint. You don't know what's coming ahead of us, but you're going to be shuffling, cutting, punching, tearing, uh, all these things with these color papers. Now that you have all these, you get to decide what are your favorites? What are your favorite combinations? And then as we go into shape, it's like, you're going to start to feel, well, I know that I'm this person when it comes to shape and you've got all these colors already done for you. You don't have to get out your brush and your paint and you don't have to wait for things to dry. The whole point of this is to make things in this early play stage go faster for you so that you can start to put the pieces together of who you are with easy things that don't need to be glued down or don't paint doesn't need to dry. Once you get it and you're kind of inspired by it, in Explore is when we cover the technical aspects of, okay, let's say you love the grid. And a lot of you are asking, yeah, but how do I do it, right? Okay, that that that's an important question. But for right now, what I want you to think about is, okay, I can't believe how much I like this grid. I can't believe how much I'm able to express myself in this way. And then don't worry about the how do we do it just for now, you might want to glue that into your my story sketchbook and just say, okay, for later, we're learning how to do this. And I don't care what medium we're going to do it in. We're going to be able to do it in, in any medium. The important discovery is that you found something that you enjoyed and loved. Uh, we're trying to make the process super fast and easy so that you don't have to think about that. Gosh, in five minutes, you could do 10 compositions. And you could say, okay, of these 10, my favorite are these three. They're going in my, my story sketchbook. You save those. And by the time we get to explore, um, all you're going to have to do is say, I want to turn this into a painting. And then we're going to go through the process of how to do it. Okay. So don't worry about how right now. This is the thing about color. It's, it takes years to develop the ability to discern what value a color is. And when you convert color to black and white, if you don't know what's down here, you don't know that, um, of course that's covered up, that's highly saturated, but this guy right here is pretty highly saturated. And look what it is here. The black and white view will never ever be able to tell you about saturation, which is another reason why color is tricky. You might say, yeah, I mean, great design. It's looking really good in the black and white, but then you're like, but it's not working, why? And then we have to realize that this cannot tell you what is saturated. That's when we have to not look at the black and white, look at the color. So it's kind of like you have to consider two things, but we're doing this one step at a time because otherwise people get overwhelmed and it doesn't take long for any of us to get overwhelmed. Notice that many of these papers are very solid and that in itself is not that easy because you get brush strokes, you get brayer marks, you get squeegee marks. I had to work really hard to get a solid, solid. Now, I'm not talking about the ACE paint section paint chip, which is like, you know, so perfect that you know, I'm not going for perfection here. But if we look at the black and white down here, what we're trying to do is make it easier for ourselves. When it comes time for us to start thinking about value and composition, there's a time for texture and there's a time for solid. And what's going to be most useful for us in our discussion as we lap together compositions in 10 minutes is you really, when I say solid, I mean solid. And I want you to make it as solid as you can, which just means uh, you don't want a value change. And I, what I mean is a noticeable value change. You can have a slight value change, like one step, right? A nine and an eight or an eight and a seven, but don't have like a nine and a five on there because now you're getting into the, the weeds here. Okay. We, we, there is a time when we have to say, okay, we're talking about uh, one value here. We're not talking about five. If you've got five values on one swatch, it's going to be harder for you to, to see the strength of simplicity. What solid color is all about is simplicity that less is more. Okay. So when we want simplicity, we need to know how to get it. Well, the color sheets are your opportunity 
to focus on no change in value. And like I said, that's not that easy. So don't be surprised if you spend time like going over that piece of paper, even if it's a piece of book paper, five times. Don't give up until it looks pretty solid. Now, if you're working acrylic, uh, when you first put the paint down, it's it's a certain value. But when it dries, it dries a little darker. I'd say at least one step darker, which means if you want something very high key, you almost have to over exaggerate how light it is. So I want you to over exaggerate those highlights because they're going to be very, very important. Again, mid-tones are the easiest and then darks aren't too hard either, right? Because you just have to add black or a tone, a dark tone to anything. And you get, it's pretty easy to make your darks and your mid-tones. But where you're going to be challenged is to make your high, lightest lights. When we start to study composition in depth, it's not going to be just the grid. It's not going to be just um, this next one that's coming up in shapes. It's going to be combining multiple compositions. And you're going to, it's going to open up a whole new world for you that it's going to blow your mind. And that's what I know is coming. And that's why I'm so excited. Having something that is a grid amongst all these other things that you love so much more can be a very good counterpoint. That's why, you know, keep track of the things you really don't like. Make a list. Oh my gosh, I hate this color. I don't like this shape. I don't like this texture because you're going to have to pull that out at some point when you make these compositions to make the things you love you're not going to realize how much you love this until you see this next to it. So that's why it's two sides of the same coin painting and, and all this artwork. It's not just about showing what we love. I, I chose these for what was being said. Um, the main ingredient was actually a page from the no fear sketchbook, the one with the homemade brushes. So bits and pieces from uh, that page is on every collage square. Um, I enjoyed the puzzle a lot. So she's learning how to um, create harmony. I mean, if you look at any of these, they, they, they almost seem like they shouldn't uh, be so harmonious, but look what she's done to make it harmonious. These dots repeat here, here, they're punch outs here, here. Now they become squares. She's got lines here, a circle, a stencil, perhaps. Again, that repeats. It becomes so much fun when you realize how these abstract compositions give you power, they empower you. And you're like, oh, my, you're, they're going to boost your confidence. I guarantee it. And this is only the very first one. Okay. Now I want to talk here about, um, you know, celebrate is toward the end of our success path, but we also want to celebrate kind of consistently. I wanted to um, share Cynthia Lee's great news about being accepted into this uh, prestigious Illinois artist list. And I wanted to congratulate Lisa Debates and others who received awards. Okay, now again, this is not everybody. I'm just kind of randomly choosing. I had I couldn't include everybody. Cheryl Whale, all of you are celebrating awards. There are many more of you. And trust me, this is just the beginning. Not that you guys are all here to win awards. I'm not saying that because that may not be your goal. But if it is, what we're doing here is every masterclass increasing your ability to not only have the confidence to submit to a juried show, but to walk away with an award because jurors and curators are always looking for your personal point of view. And that's where we all get this idea that your art has to all look the same, but it doesn't. All you ever have to know about juried shows really is that whatever you submit, make sure those two pieces or three are cohesive. That doesn't mean that the curators sing everything in your studio. Don't ever feel like everything in your studio has to look like it came from one person. Um, that is a huge misunderstanding. It can look like 25 people, but they're all you, but you have to feel free to do the experimentation in your studio so that you know who you are. You need to be able to make choices and say, well, these 12 experiments are certainly not me, but I'm glad I did them because now I know. And if you don't do them because you're worried that they're not going to look like you, it's missing. It's a missing link. That's Thank you so much for that, Pam. You know, that is something that everybody always says. You have to have cohesive work, cohesive work. And it has held me back personally so much because I do so many different things. And, and just to hear you say that makes so much sense. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. And all people need to see at the end of the day is your cake. They don't need to see the ingredients that you use to make the cake. 
And that's what your studio is. That's where you have all of your ingredients are not in any containers, your flour is spilled on the floor and you, you know, you accidentally use sugar instead of salt or whatever it is. <laughs> and you make mistakes. Nobody <laughs> wants to see your mistakes. But you need to have a lab where you can make mistakes and not judge yourself. And then the only thing the public sees or that a curator or juror sees or a gallerist, you become the curator and you choose what to show them. And you did a series. That's the series you think is the voice you want them to see. Great. That's the voice you take to them. If you, again, I, I'm going to have to do a presentation to show you that some of the most famous artists in the world, and I've said this before, but Gerhard Richter, Jeff Koons, Piet Mondrian, if you look at their whole lifetime of artwork, you would think they were schizophrenic. It gives you comfort to know that they look schizophrenic too, because we often think that we only see the work that they're recognized for, but we don't see the work that led up to it. And every, every body of work that they did leading up to it is just as important. In fact, there would not have been the work that they are known for if they had not done the work leading up to it. It's a journey. It's a pathway. So get used to just like the work is really should be experimental and, and considered to be your research and not meant to look identical to everything else because you are making decisions in your studio. Again, exhibitions are obviously a a big deal and something we celebrate, but we also want to celebrate sold work, right? And again, it's just a handful. We want to celebrate studio shows, um, studio visits, like um, what Rachel is getting ready for. She was celebrating the fact that she had a successful result with her pouring medium, which can cause a little bit of anxiety because, you know, the stuff doesn't look right when you first pour it out. So when you're getting ready for a big event and you're trying something that you makes you you know, you're not sure if it's going to work out, that's taking a risk. So we want to celebrate that too. Obviously selling work is, is a pat on the back, but that's going to become so common for you by the time you get to say masterclass, whatever, you know, nine, 10, 11, if that's your goal, selling work, is not going to be hard for you. It's really wonderful to celebrate it, but people want to buy work that feels like you've traveled a journey to get there. That's what they want to buy from you. They want to buy you. Even though we spend some time copying other artists and, you know, we must do that. That's how we learn. That's how we learned how to speak. We didn't learn our language by not listening to our parents, but you'll never be happy copying for very long. That's the good news. But what you take with you is all this wonderful information about, well, you copied it because you obviously loved that technique or something about it. And it will end up in your work in some degree but not to the extent of the work you're copying. By the time you're ready to present who you are, it will sell. There's just no doubt about it. The selling is not hard once you do your homework, which is what we're doing in these master classes.